Good morning, everyone. I wanted to do a live about an update on the um, Oregon Health Authority um, email that's been going out over the last um, couple of months. We've had some issues with Oregon Health Authority uh, basically trying to put into effect a permanent rule that um, if you are operating against a government mandate, uh, they can actually punish you for that. Um, they have not listed out what the punishments might be, what the consequences are. But basically, um, if you may recall, I did a video about this um, last month. And just to recap, um, there was no law or rule or regulation in effect with Oregon Health Authority that said that because the government told me I couldn't operate, I actually couldn't operate. And that is why when I was operating for three weeks before the governor told me I could, I did not receive any fines, citations, or license revocations, uh, penalties, I wasn't arrested. Um, I, I suffered no consequences from Oregon Health Authority. And that is who holds my uh, license as a stylist, and it, it's also who holds my license to operate Glamour Salon. So, uh, because there was indeed no way to penalize somebody like me who insisted that they stay open and operate their business um, legally, they tried to create one. And a few months ago, they sent out an email asking for um, public comments on this new mandate that they wanted to make um, permanent. Um, my attorney and I took it on uh, because it does affect everyone in Oregon that holds um, some kind of license with Oregon Health Authority. And we, we went over all those jobs, there's a lot. <laughs> So um, my attorney sent an email to Ms. Ann Thompson, who is with um, Oregon Health Authority, and basically told them that they couldn't make a law permanent without going through the proper procedures, which they did not do. Um, in one of their own columns, they wrote, were businesses um, consulted regarding this, this new permanent rule? They wrote no. They did not consult businesses regarding this rule. Um, they wrote that they anticipated that there would be no economic damage if they made this rule permanent. What that means is what they're saying is, if we make it a rule that when the governor says you have to shut down, you have to shut down. And here are the consequences if you don't. We could take away your license. Um, we don't expect that to affect anyone negatively economically. And, and that's obviously false. Um, we're seeing... Um, a lot of small business owners that hold licenses that are going completely out of business, that um, can't operate, um, filing bankruptcy, um, most of them haven't even gotten their unemployment. So um, they did not go through the proper procedures and they did not ask the right questions and they did not consult businesses before deciding that they would make a permanent rule that could actually shut us down and actually make our license revocable by doing so. So my attorney sent uh, on August 28th, he sent the following letter. Um, I've already read it in a previous live, and so I don't want to read the whole thing again. He represents me. Um, he basically informed them that the rulemaking is woefully deficient. Uh, this statute requires your agency to, A, estimate the number of small businesses that will be affected by the rule, and B, a brief description of the projected reporting by the proposed rule, and C, identification of any increased equipment supplies labor involved with complying with the rule, and D, the degree of involvement that small businesses had in drafting the rule. Now, they already told us the amount, the degree of involvement that small businesses had in drafting the rule was a big whopping zero. They didn't ask small businesses how it would affect them if they shut them down. <laughs> so they skipped all kinds of steps in trying to make this rule permanent. My attorney wrote them a letter, he called them out, he told them right here, um, the amendment requires small businesses like my clients to shut down if so ordered by the governor. This will obviously uh, have an impact on small business. How your agency could write none expected is beyond ridiculous. It demonstrates a complete lack of respect for the law and disregard for the very businesses your agency is supposed to be working with. <clears throat> If your agency does not rescind the rule and follow the law, my client will take immediate action seeking judicial review of the amendment and ask the court to stay your agency's enforcement of the amendment until your agency decides to adopt the amendment in compliance with the law. So basically what we said is 
You can't put this law into effect because you didn't follow the rules to do so. You didn't follow the law to even make it a permanent rule. So if you tried to launch it, we are going to block you in the court of law. Um, so that was sent by my attorney on August 28th. So a little over a month ago um, about this law that was that's trying to be made permanent. And they had already closed commenting on it. So basically, whatever attention we brought to this law, it was too late to publicly comment on. So they decided that they could, I mean, they could basically move forward. So now we've threatened to stop them from making this uh, law permanent because they didn't go through the right channels to do so. And lo and behold, I received an email yesterday um, from Oregon Health Authority saying that we are now invited again to review the proposed rule and submit comments from October 1st through November 19th until 10 a.m. So what they're saying is they are now actually going through the proper channels because this rule would have gotten stayed in court had they not. They're now actually going through the proper channels to try to get this rule pushed through. Um, so this is what we need. We need you guys to email your public comments because, and I'm not 100% sure on this, but I believe every public comment has to be in the file. So when they try to push this rule into effect, there needs to be hundreds of thousands of people who have emailed to say, here's how this rule will affect my business. Here's how it will affect me economically. Here's how it will affect me emotionally. Um, here's how it will affect all small businesses. Um, you need to be very polite, um, professional. I am in no way asking anyone to email this person and call her names. We don't act like that. That's not who we are. We are business owners. We are professionals and we are trying to stand up for our rights. And so we need to politely email exactly factually how this rule is going to affect us as business owners. So the rule is this. The rule is that the next time governors, Governor Kate Brown or whoever our governor is, attempts to do a shutdown and you don't obey, they're saying that you are violating one of their rules. The rules being um, appropriate conduct. Uh, let's see if I can find it really quick. Sorry. I wanted to say the exact, the exact word, but um, I didn't see it. My thing kind of printed big. Professional conduct. So there's a rule that says, there's a line rule in, in OHA that, that's professional conduct and you know how you have to behave to abide by professional conduct. So what this rule is saying is that if you disobey the governor and you operate against a lockdown, that you are violating that line now, that professional conduct. You're in violation of your professional conduct. And somewhere in the book is the consequences for you know, not being a professional and violating that line. So if the governor shuts you down again and you stay open like me or you reopen like me, um, I didn't suffer any consequences from Oregon Health Authority because they didn't have the authority because they didn't have this rule. Now they're going to have the rule. So this goes to show two things. One, that they never had the rule. And so this entire time that they closed us down, it was all an empty threat. B, they probably intend to close us down again. Otherwise, why would you need to go to all this effort to put this rule into a permanent effect? Why would you need that if you weren't planning to shut people down again? So they are trying to make it a permanent rule that the Oregon Health Authority can potentially issue you citations, issue you fines, revoke your license, suspend your license as a professional if you don't lock down when Governor Kate Brown says so. So um, here's what you need to do. The official email from OSHA, uh, from Oregon Health Authority says, you are invited to review the proposed rule and submit comments from October 1st, which is already, through November 19th. That's a month and a half, a little over a month and a half, um, to submit your comments. Comments will not be accepted nor considered if received after 10 a.m. on November 19th. Written comments can be submitted by way of postal mail too. I'm going to read it. I'm going to let you get a pen and you're going to write it down. Because if I show it like this, everyone tells me it's backwards. So it's attention Ann Thompson, A-N-N-E Thompson, Health Licensing Office, 
1430, you can Google this too, just Google Health Licensing Office. 1430 Tandem Avenue, Northeast, Suite 180, Salem, Oregon, 97301. So it's the health licensing office that you need to write to, or you can email them, which we all do. The email is, I'm just going to spell it out, it's Thompson. so A-N-N-E dot P dot Thompson, T-H-O-M-P-S-O-N, at D-H-S- OHA, so Department of Human Services, Oregon Health Authority, D-H-S-O-H-A dot state dot O-R dot U-S. I will type this out in the comments below this video so you guys have it. But like I said, we are not emailing hate mail. We're not emailing threats. We're not emailing disgusting, vulgar, angry comments. We are not like that. We are simply professionals trying to stand up for our rights to operate. So you need to email what would happen. I would say, you know, your, your full name, your position, what business you represent, um, how the last shutdown affected you uh, financially, um, emotionally, mentally, and how you presume another shutdown would affect you. And the key, is, the key here is economically, because what they're looking for is, is that if they shut us down, no one really suffers economically. And that's obviously 100% not true. It will affect all of us drastically. And so be very factual um, and be very courteous and be very polite about um, kind of how ridiculous this rule is and how much damage it would do to you as a business owner, um, to your business. And if you're a business owner, you understand this, it's going to damage you personally too. Because business owners take their income and that's how they pay their personal bills. So you can reiterate to them how it's going to affect how you pay your mortgage or your rent, how you pay your child care services, um, how you pay for your groceries, your cost of living, your car payments, your insurance. Um, be as you know direct as you can be uh, without being hateful. And please let Ann Thompson at the Health Licensing Office know that shutting small businesses down and threatening to revoke their licenses if they don't comply will be detrimental to our entire state, to every small business that owns or that, that holds um, uh, a license through the state of Oregon. Um, we're we're going to be in a really tough place if they try to pull this again. I know a lot of people are going to be um, completely probably out of business. So it's really important that you guys submit your comments. Again, uh, it needs to be before 10 a.m. on November 19th. I would suggest putting it in your calendar um, every day for the next two weeks until you write that email and get it to them. They need to be swamped with emails. They need to hear from every small business owner in Oregon what would happen if they tried to shut us down and then they tried to punish us if we didn't. They need to hear it, you guys. So the email again is a n n e dot p dot t h o m p s o n at d h s o h a dot state dot o r dot u s it's so long but if you need to look up this information yourself it's the health licensing office on tandem avenue and you're directing all your correspondence correspondence to ann thompson she is the person that will be um monitoring those emails and putting these comments into public record. Um, I would like to say that um, if this does go through, um, despite all of our public comments, I'm pretty sure my attorney and I will be taking it on in court anyway um, because it's ridiculous and it's clearly just another government overreach trying to control us. Um, we will also be submitting our public comments for this, um, of course, soon. <laughs> um, I don't think public comments get read publicly, so I don't think we're all going to see each other's comments. But it's a public comment, meaning it goes on record that you've that you've you know submitted um, you know a response to this to this new regulation. So please, 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 please take the time. It it could save your small business and. Please be aware that I'm watching this closely and so is my attorney. 
Um, he firmly believes, I firmly believe, I firmly believe that the reason this is happening right now is because of him, because he took the time to, to write a letter and say, you didn't do this right. Nice try. You're trying to push this through under our noses. We all got wind of it after you tried to get, get it pushed through. You didn't do it legally and we're not going to let, let you get away with that. And if you try, we're going to take you to court and you're going to, you know, you're not going to get it passed through anyway. We're going to stay it. So this is all happening because he took the time to take this on also. This is Ross Day. Um, he's my attorney. He's actually running for um, city council for Kaiser. Um, if you have not looked into who you're voting for for city council for Kaiser, he is the guy because this man is backing us up 100%. He is all about small businesses. Clearly, he just basically made this whole thing. He put it back on the table again. So now we all have a second chance to say what we need to say regarding this mandate and make sure it does not get pushed through. And if it does, guess what? Ross Day is going to email me and he's going to say, we're taking this on too, because this is not cool. This is not right. It's unconstitutional in my opinion. He likes me to not use the word unconstitutional, but I think anything where you're taking away someone's um, freedom to work and freedom to live and freedom to pay their bills and their livelihood, I think that's unconstitutional. So it's, it's unconstitutional. So um, just please be aware that I will do lives about this as it progresses. And I cannot stress enough that the call to action here is to politely and professionally email health licensing office and tell them uh, that their proposed rule will indeed affect you economically as a small business. Um, I wish I had the actual rule number down here. I will find it. Um, no, I do have it. Uh, the new section rule is 331-020-0079. That's the rule they're trying to push through. Um, that's the one I would reference when you're emailing. And um, if it does go through, we're going to be watching it closely and we are going to do what we can to continue to try to save small businesses in Oregon. And the fantastic overreach of Governor Kate Brown, who wants nothing more than to see us all fail. And the poor, poor thing, she's not going to witness that in her lifetime because we are going to keep fighting and we are not going to let her continue to shut us down and lock us down and take away our livelihood. And by golly, I'll be darned if she's not uh, put under citizen's arrest anytime soon. She deserves to be. Uh, I'd like to see that happen in my lifetime. So um, you guys have a great day. Um, have a great weekend. Thank you for watching. And please do share this because the last video that I made about this particular subject um, got shared a lot and it, it made a big difference. I asked people to email Ann Thompson at Oregon Health Licensing uh, Office. And I believe that the reason that this is back on our plates again is because we emailed, we took action, we said our piece, we made ourselves known, we fought it. And now here we are getting a chance to fight it again. So um, please share this so that other small businesses know that they need to take action as well. And again, I'm going to put all this information in the comments of this. Um, and I'll also put it in a separate thread on my public page. So if you see this and you're not following my public page, it's just Lindsey Graham public page. And I will post this information on that page somewhere for you guys to reference. So please, please, please um, make your call to action. Um, if you know someone that owns a small business and you think it's going to affect them economically, um, speak for them. Uh, it doesn't need to just be us fighting for ourselves. If you have a family member that owns a small business, uh, they need someone to fight for them too. The more emails we can get to Ann Thompson, uh, the more likely they're going to realize how detrimental this is and what it's going to do to Oregon small businesses, the entire economy, um, and us as just, you know, moms, dads, single parents, human beings, um, a lot of us will suffer. So the call to action is, is um, pretty, pretty excessive here, pretty needed. Thank you so much for watching and God bless America and don't forget to vote in November. And also I would be a jerk if I didn't say that um, God bless President Trump and um, I pray that him and his first lady recover from COVID like the other 99.9% .9 of people that do. But just in case we have an almighty God, so I will be praying uh, for a full recovery for them. I suggest you do too. Thank you so much. Goodbye.